Let's create a basic block and see and add it to Minecraft. Even more topics available in the 121 Minecraft modding courses, now with energy and fluid handling for block entities next to many other awesome topics. All right, we'll come back and tell you once more. And in this tutorial, we'll be adding a basic block entity to our Minecraft mod. And this is going to be a pedestal, basically meaning we're going to have a block that we can right click with an item and it's then going to save that item onto that block entity. And that is also one of the things that a block entity is, right? A block entity basically contains additional data for a particular block. For example, you can add an inventory to a block entity, which wouldn't work in an actual normal block, let's say. But we're going to see the implementation of all of this in just a second. We're first of all going to start with the block itself. And that's going to happen in the block custom package. Then we're going to make a new Java class called the pedestal block class in this case. And as per usual, all of the code is available to you down below in the description in the GitHub repository. I highly recommend you go there and open that up as well, because we will be copying over a couple of things here and there. But let's just begin here with the pedestal block. This will extend from the block with entity class over here and will also implement the block entity provider interface. We're going to hover over this to implement the methods over here. We'll hover over this bit constructor matching super. I'm going to make the super public over here. And then the first thing we'll actually copy over is the voxel shape because in this case, the pedestal block has a custom model associated with it. However, in this case, obviously we've seen the voxel shape and the get outline shape methods both in the chair already where we were able to well, basically also have a different uh, outline when we hovered over the block. So that's literally what this is. And then all of the model stuff will deal with that in a bit. Next thing we've also already seen, but we're going to type this out, is going to be the public static final map codec over here of type pedestal block. In this case, we're just going to call this the codec. And this is going to be equal to pedestal block dot create codec, passing in pedestal block, colon, colon, new. And we can then easily simply return this over here in the get codec method. And that is going to be what we need here. The create block entity method, we can't return anything yet because we don't have a block entity yet. So we're just going to make a deliberate error over here. And what we'll actually do is after this, which is super freaking important, we have to overwrite the get render type method over here. And we need to return the block render type of model. If we do not do this, then our custom block or custom block entity is going to be invisible, which is of course not something that we want. So that is very important. Then the next method is the onState replace method, which will actually be copying over. And you can see that there is a tiny error over here. The reason being that we don't have the pedestal block entity class added just yet. But we're going to fix that in a second. As a high level overview, the onState replace method is called when the pedestal block changes. So for example, if you were to break it, and of course, when we break it, then what we want is to scatter all of the items contained in the inventory. And that is basically what we're doing in this method. And the final method we're going to override is the uh, on use with item method. And that one we're just going to keep like it is for the time being, because uh, we actually have to add a couple of things or rather the block entity class itself before we can deal with this. But this is where all of the logic happens. Basically, you know, the right clicking log logic. That's the idea. Now that we added the mod, let's also register it in our mod blocks class over here. That's going to be basically just a similar block to the chair over here. This is going to be the pedestal. And of course, going to be changing the name here to pedestal as well. And very importantly, this is a new pedestal block in this case, where we also want to call the non opaque method over here. That is correct. With that, let's also add it to the item group over here, because that is a thing that I sometimes forget. Not always, but sometimes I do. And then we can close all of this and we can proceed to add the block entity class. That's going to be quite interesting. That's going to happen in tutorial mod block. And we're going to make a new package here called entity. Inside there, we'll need two new classes. The first one is going to be the mod block entities class. There we go. The second one is an interface which will copy over. This is available to you down below. I'll explain this in just a second. This is the implemented interface. Like I said, I'll explain this in a second. And in the entity package, I'm going to make a new package called custom. And that is where we'll place our pedestal block entity class. There we go. First and foremost, we're talking about the implemented interface. This is basically an implementation of the interface for a sided inventory. Idea being that we just have all of the methods that we need, meaning things like, hey, can we extract it to this inventory? What is the size of this inventory? And things like that. That just makes it a little bit cleaner so that in the block entity, we don't have the have it all cluttered up 
with methods for basically, um, you know, using the inventory that we're going to add. That's the idea. Right, and the block entity class is going to extend from the, well, block entity class, and it will implement the implemented inventory. I'm going to hover over this to implement the get items method, hover over this again, create constructor matching super, and there we have it. Here we're going to delete the type over here because we're going to, well, actually need to get this another way, and that is via the mod block entities class to actually first register our block entity. It's going to be quite straightforward. We're going to have a public static final block entity type of type pedestal block entity. It's going to be our pedestal underscore be equal to registry, making sure we choose net Minecraft registry. Super important. Do not import Java RMI. That's going to be an issue. Net Minecraft registry that register. And this is going to be registries dot block entity type. Then an identifier dot of tutorial mod dot mod ID. The name here is going to be pedestal underscore be. After the first closing parenthesis, we'll then call block entity type dot builder dot create passing in pedestal block entity colon colon new. And the second parameter here is going to be mod blocks dot pedestal. And then after the first closing parenthesis, we're going to call a build and that should be that. Now we're going to add the null over here. I don't even think we need to add the null over here, but we're just going to, need to do that because why the frick not? And that is going to be okay. And we, of course, also need a public static void register block entities method over here. And here we're just going to call, like I said, as per usual, this is not necessary. However, I do like doing it. Block entities for, and there's going to be for tutorial mod that mod ID. And of course, this register block entities method, we have to go to the tutorial mod class to the on initialize method and actually call this. So mod block entities dot register block entities. And now the block entity is registered. So we can close this. We can close the implemented interface and we can go back to the pedestal block entity class. And inside of the super call, we can say mod block entities dot pedestal be. And that is it. Now to add the inventory, super freaking simple. This is a private final defaulted list of type item stack. And this is going to be the inventory equal to a defaulted list of size one with item stacks dot empty as its default because well I mean an inventory in you know usually or as default has an empty slot that's the idea and then the get items method simply is going to return the inventory and then we need a couple of other methods that are going to well basically lead to the rest so the first thing is we need two methods to synchronize server and client those usually look always the same in block entities. It's going to be the two initial chunk data NBT method, which returns the create NBT passing in the registry outlook lookup right here. And then here is the to update packet method, which creates a new block entity update S to C packet over here, passing in this. Those two we need in order for the client and the server to properly synchronize, like I said, so that the inventory basically is synchronized. And that is almost it. The last thing we also need is we somehow need to be able to save the inventory and also read the inventory. And for that, we're going to have the write NVT and read NVT methods. Also, I'm just going to quickly copy those over. As per usual, the code is available to you down below in the description in the GitHub repository. So you can also check it there. But you can see super freaking simple. Simply override both the write NVT and the read NVT methods. And then here inside of them, we literally just call the inventories write NBT, passing in the NBT, passing in the inventory and the registry lookup. And we're doing the exact same thing here, just with read NBT. And that is going to be able to save our inventory when we, for example, save the world. Then that is also going to save the inventory of our block entity. With that done, we can go back to the pedestal block class and import the pedestal block entity. The on state replace method is now without any errors. Then in the create block entity, we can make a new pedestal block entity passing in the position passing in the state. And then finally, we only have left the last thing, and that is going to be the on use with item method over here. And that's going to look like this. I will actually copy over the contents of this. And it, at first look, it will look a little bit complicated, but I will explain, of course, line by line. First of all, we're asking whether or not the click position has even a block entity associated with it. Now, this should basically be almost always true because that's just going to be a thing, but we still do this just so that we can immediately also cast it to this pedestal block entity, and then we have it. Right, and then we have two if statements over here, and basically, well, two different things that are happening. So let's first of all go through the first one. The first one asks if the pedestal block entity is empty, meaning that the inventory has nothing inside of it. And we have right-clicked with something, meaning that the stack that we've right-clicked with is not empty. Then we're going to set whatever stack we've right-clicked with to the 
uh, to the block entity, right? So we're basically taking the stack that we right click with and we're going to set that to the pedestal block entity. Now here, it's actually quite important that we want to actually uh, copy with a count of one. Now the reason here is because I actually only ever want one item to be inserted into the pedestal block entity. And if we do this, we basically ensure that ever only one, like a, one item is going to be inserted and then obviously it's no longer empty and therefore that's fine. Here we're also decreasing the um, or decrementing the amount of items that we have in our item stack that we right click with so that it basically gets reduced by one. We also play a sound, crucially important. I highly recommend you do this because otherwise uh, we're right now we're not going to see anything like no, no, nothing's going to happen. Just our item is going to disappear. And that's of course kind of strange. Uh, additionally here we have an else if statement. So the idea is that if the pedestal block now has something on there and we right click with a with an empty hand and we're not sneaking, then what happens is we're basically looking at taking the stack that the pedestal has on its like in its slot right we're getting that stack then setting that stack to the stack in the item hand that we have we're once again playing a, a sound over here and then clearing everything that is inside of the inventory and that's it that's the logic over here as per usual i highly recommend you play around with this if you so choose to and the last step over here is the assets so for the assets of course we need to add some stuff and because the pedestal is a custom block model we need a block states json file we need a block model json file and an item model json file now the block states json file over here so we're going to do those manually basically they pretty much all are well i mean very simple right the item and the block states one super freaking simple while the block one obviously is once again just a custom one made with block bench over here in this case and there we go we also, of course, have a texture, which will also be available to you down below in the description for download. So no worries there at all. There we have it. That's going to be the pedestal.png. There you go. And finally, a translation. And there we have it. That should be everything that we're going to need. So let's jump into the game and see if it works. All right, fans are back in Minecraft. And let's just take a look. And there we have it. The pedestal has been added. And let's just get a couple of items out here. Let's just say this one as well there we go and if i set down the pedestal you can see that all works fine and if i right click it with an item whatever it might be you can see we're reducing the item right here and we also heard a click if i use an empty hand and a right click look at this i can get my pink garnet back and i can put it back in and you can see if i right click with an another item it does not actually add it to it exactly how we wanted it to and the same thing is going to go if i save the world and go back in we will see that i can't add another item here however i can take out the items that were already in there absolutely fantastic now obviously this is well i mean you could say this is kind of boring because right now there's like zero display that nothing's happening uh, except the items are basically gone that's what we're going to fix in the next tutorial for now we have a basic block entity awesome as per usual all of the code is available to you down below but next time in this video we'll talk about a block entity renderer hope to see you there so yeah